Trapping native budworm moths is not unusual for deep herd staff at WA's Northern Office, who monitor and determine potential risks of native budworm caterpillars to pulse, lupin and canola crops. What is unusual and concerning is that budworm is increasingly targeting wheat crops. One. Two. Alert times for budworm are generally late winter and spring when populations migrate very long distances into agricultural regions, causing crop damage at their most sensitive growing time. They're a common pest, but over the past few years, agronomists and growers have reported caterpillars feeding off wheat in spring. This has prompted in-field and glasshouse research by DeepHerd, supported by GRDC Investment, to examine new dynamics of native budworm in non-traditional cereal crop hosts such as wheat. Ultimately it was quite surprising because we hadn't had to deal with this before with this species. It was usually other species, armyworm and lesser budworm. So we're wondering why are they there, um, what's going on here? Glasshouse trials are focusing on how they interact with cereals and other crop types and the behaviours of budworm larvae and moth egg laying around wheat, a non-traditional host, and known hosts such as lupin, faba bean and wild radish. Yeah, so this is a classic where the radish control hasn't been 100%. Often where they found caterpillar, budworm caterpillar pressure in wheat, there were um, uncontrolled wild radish plants. A lot of times it's just difficult agronomically to get on top of all the wild radish and wheat crop. This is actually a host of budworm and we do know that they lay eggs uh, on wild radish so we think that that's that's part of the problem as well um, and we've confirmed that through Glasshouse trials. The Glasshouse trials are being supported by lab experiments aimed ultimately at supporting growers in the field. We use the microscope for a few different things because there are other caterpillars that can be found on wheat, such as armyworm and lesser budworm. So we use the microscope to differentiate between those and, and confirm that it is um, native budworm that we're finding. We also use the microscope to differentiate if this pupae is a male or a female, and that's important because then we can set up mating pairs for our experiments and also for our colony that we keep. But concerningly, the experiments are revealing budworm have developed a taste for advanced heading wheat. It was pretty clear there was something in the head that's attracting them to climb up and then actually feed in the glooms. So that was uh, a big warning, I guess, for us. Not only were they feeding into the glooms in the seed where you're going to get immediate yield loss and, and quality problems, uh, but they were actually feeding on the flag leaf as well. It is it volunteer lupins, for example, where wheat's sown in a lupin stubble. If a grower doesn't get on top of all of the volunteer lupins that are coming through, which are a host, these budware moths that are migrating are going to be laying eggs on the volunteer lupins, hatching, and then potentially feeding on actually the wheat, the wheat heads um, later in the season. Climate change is another consideration. Higher summer rainfall is boosting budworm food source through northeast pastoral regions, opening a bigger management window. Native budworm are migrating earlier and in strong populations, with those increasing numbers needing more food sources, meaning non-traditional hosts, such as wheat, could be at risk across WA's grain growing region. When WA uh, generally the moths migrate first into the northern egg region. Um, that's pretty typical of what we see. And, and then also the eastern grain belt. And then in some years, uh, the sort of great southern down to Albany regions, they might not get that migration come through until September, October. And in some years, fortunately for them, it can happen so late that they won't even have to spray. But not so much for the northern egg region and the eastern grain belt seems to get the highest pressure every year. Right now it's a numbers game for the researchers, determining how many native budworm could impact wheat yield and thresholds for each crop before making a decision to spray, given they don't appear to lay eggs on wheat. In our field investigations, sometimes we would find very high numbers, 20, 30 and 10 sweeps, but the damage was very low. So it's, it's a combination of the fact that we know that they're not a traditional host and they don't really want to be here, they would much prefer uh, lupins. 
um, but they will cause damage. So we, we want to see what's the worst case scenario and then what's the general scenario that growers need to be worried about. While the research continues into exactly what level of threat native budworm poses to wheat, the advice to growers is for periodic monitoring of crops and generally in spring to walk your paddocks. They're looking for diseases as well at this time of year. Um, get your eye in and just, you're, you're looking for damage, you're looking for um, symptoms. But because caterpillars are very good at hiding is why we bring in a sweep net into the crop. We give um, 10 sweeps of 180 degrees and we dump it into a container or back of your ute and you'd be surprised what you find that's hiding in there. Growers are encouraged to offer their feedback of on-farm experiences of native budworm to better inform the research which is halfway through at this stage. There's plenty of support here from us uh, in the PestFAC service which is a co-investment with GRDC. Um, so get in touch with us if you're unsure about the caterpillar, you're unsure about you're finding damage in your wheat crop, um, we'd be really interested to know. Mm -hmm.